Hi everyone, and thanks for tuning in. If you watched one of my previous videos about cores, or cross-origin resource sharing, then you should understand the theory behind it. In this video, we're going to actually enable it on an S3 bucket through the AWS console. So let's dive in. Here's an overview of what we're going to build. We'll have one bucket, our origin bucket, that has an index.html file in it. That index.html file is going to use some JavaScript to fetch another HTML file that lives in another bucket. And that bucket is going to be our cross-origin bucket. So first things first, let's go create the buckets in S3. And create bucket. The first one will be my origin bucket. And then to make sure it's globally unique, I'll just add the TTT for tiny technical tutorials, date, Scrolling down, I will open this up to public access. There are ramifications to doing this because you're basically opening this up to the whole world. For what I'm doing here, it's fine, but in the real world, just make sure that you understand what you're doing here. You do need to acknowledge that you know what you're doing, so make sure that's true. And then we'll leave the defaults for everything else. Create bucket. And then all view details. Next, we need to enable static website hosting. So if we come into the Properties tab and scroll all the way to the end of the page, it's currently disabled, but we'll edit, enable, host a static website. The index document will be index.html, defaults for everything else, and we'll save changes. And then we also need to, on the Permissions tab, update the bucket policy to say that everybody's allowed to read everything in this bucket. I've got some code on my clipboard that I'll just paste in here. I'll also provide this in the description below if you just want to grab it and copy and paste. Just make sure you don't end up with any extra lines or spaces. Sometimes there's an extra space at the very top here, so just a potential gotcha there. And then you will need to update the bucket name, and that's just going to be whatever you name the bucket up here. So I'll paste that in. So we're allowing everybody to get object, basically view things in this bucket. Okay, I'll save changes. And then I'll take those exact same steps to create a second bucket. But this one's going to be called my cross origin bucket just so we can keep them straight in our heads. If you want to follow along with the rest of the steps, feel free, but otherwise skip ahead in the video to the next spot. But I'll just quickly go through here. We're going to allow all public access, acknowledge, create bucket, view details. On the properties tab, we need to enable static website hosting. So edit, enable, index.html, save. And then finally, under permissions, just update the bucket policy. I'll paste in that same code, make sure to get rid of the line down here, and then update the bucket name here, and then save. Okay, this is what we have so far. Two buckets, they're both enabled for static website hosting and open to the world. But importantly, these are cross-domain or cross-origin. You can see there by the URLs, because we have different bucket names, the URLs are different. Next, let's work on the HTML files. Now to start with, we're going to put both of these on the origin server just to make sure everything works. And then we'll eventually get things going cross origin. But let's take a look at what we have so far. On my desktop, I've created a super simple index.html page. Let me open that up. So really basic stuff up here. My first website, this is text on the origin page. And then down here, We've got a script that's going to grab content from a second HTML page, fetched page.html. And then we're going to set the inner HTML of our div to what's on that page. So it's basically embedding one HTML page in another. And then just to quickly show you that fetched page, this one is equally as impressive. Here we go. My first website and hello from the fetched page. Okay, very simple. So let's switch back over to our S3 bucket. And like I mentioned, we're going to start with the origin bucket originally. We'll just get both things uploaded there, make sure they're talking to each other okay, and then we'll worry about the cross origin setup. 
So starting in my origin bucket, we'll go to upload. And then I'll just drop both of these right over here and upload. So now if we come to index.html and we open up this object URL here, it works. So this is the text on the origin page or index.html page, and this is the text coming over from that fetched page, that second page. Yay! Now we need to update this. We need to move the fetched page over to the cross origin bucket and make sure these can talk to each other. And this is where the cores is going to come in. Okay, first I'm going to come into the origin bucket, our first bucket. Just to be extra sure, let me close out of this. I'm going to delete this page, just so we don't accidentally open it somehow. So I'll say delete, permanently delete. Okay, perfect. So now in this bucket, we only have the index.html page. I'll open up a new tab so we can open up the cross origin bucket. And we'll upload that fetched page here. So I'll just drag this over, upload. So now we have the index.html page on the origin bucket, the page to fetch, the fetched page on the cross origin bucket. But we do need to go update our index.html page to point to this one. So let me open that up in Notepad. So right here, rather than just fetching the fetched page.html from the same location where index was living, meaning they were both in the same bucket, we need to update this with the URL of the page on the cross origin bucket. So let's go grab that here in the cross origin bucket. We'll click on fetched page. And then the object URL that we want is right here. So I'll just copy that to my clipboard, update it here, save index.html, and then we need to go replace the index.html page that we have on the origin bucket. So a little bit of back and forth here. Let me go back to my origin bucket. We have the index.html file here, the old one. So let's upload, drag over the new one. This new one has the URL pointing to the second bucket. So we'll upload. And now the moment of truth. This was our page from earlier. Let's refresh. And it doesn't work. So we're getting the text on the origin page, but the text that's being pulled from the other page, the cross origin, is not showing up. There's no error or anything here, but if you come into the dev tools, I'm using Chrome, but you should be able to get to these in other browsers as well. Just come into more tools and developer tools. And here we get the dreaded cores error. So access to fetch at this location has been blocked by cores policy. No header is present and so on. So it's basically saying our cross origin bucket or second bucket hasn't allowed the first bucket to access resources that are living on it. So let's go fix that. And what exactly do we need to do? Well, as we've covered in that previous video, the cross origin bucket has to allow access to the origin bucket. It just doesn't work the other way around. The origin bucket can't say, oh, I want access to bucket A, B, and C, and D. Those settings have to happen on the cross origin bucket instead. So let's pull up that bucket. And we'll go to the permissions tab. And then down here on the bottom, there's a whole section for cores. We'll edit. And as you're getting started, this link here is actually pretty helpful The learn more. And if you expand the S3 console option and then go to this link here, course configuration, it'll give you a lot of examples and JSON code that you can use and kind of play around with, or at least just learn what's going on. So a really good resource there. I actually have some code on my clipboard that I'll paste in. I will make this available as well down in the description. So we're saying allowed headers. This is for authorization methods. We're only going to allow get, but you could also do put post and so on. And then the allowed origin. So what domain are we allowing access to things on this domain? And just a note here, you will need to update this. Our origin domain or the origin bucket. I can actually just grab that from right here. 
you'll just want up to the dot com. Paste that in here. If it adds a slash at the end, make sure you delete that or you'll get an error. And that should be all we need to do. So save changes. And now if we go back to this page and refresh, it should all be working now. And there we go. Hello from the fetched page. Yay. I am getting an error over here about my fave icon, but nothing about cores anymore. So everything is working as it should. We've got the two different buckets set up going cross domain or cross origin, and the two pages are able to talk to each other. Nice work. If you found this helpful, I would really appreciate hitting that like button so it can spread to more people and also consider subscribing for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching.